everyone. We're Nick. And Rachel. If you're new here and you haven't been following our adventures so far, then typically you'll find us vlogging our travels through the world, one country at a time. But this series of videos is going to be a little bit different, and the reason that we're making them is because we've noticed as we've gone through each of these countries that there are certain things that are a little bit different to what we're used to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this YouTube channel is to share our travel experiences in the hopes of inspiring others to travel more. With that, we want to share some of the tips and tricks that we've picked up in each of the countries that we visited so that if you plan on visiting any of the same countries, you'll be armed with some information and knowledge to help you with planning and navigating around a little bit easier. This video is going to be focused on traveling in Cambodia. If you've been watching our videos, you'll know that we took stops in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. While a few pointers that we're going to be relaying to you will be about these places specifically, there will be a lot more that will be about the country as a whole. We hope that you find these useful. Tap water in Cambodia is not potable. That means you shouldn't drink it, nor should you brush your teeth with it. We recommend that you buy bottled water, and thankfully, like most countries where this is the case, it is generally very affordable and cheap to do so. If you are planning on coming to Cambodia, then one of the first things that you're going to need to figure out is the visa situation. There are two different options. You can purchase visas on arrival, but there is an e-visa for those that want to maybe have a quicker time going through customs. Both of these will cost $50 US per person. We chose not to go for the in-person option and instead opted to go for the e-visa. The process was pretty smooth and pretty quick. For anybody who is considering using an e-visa, do bear in mind that you do need to get it sorted up to 72 hours before you arrive and you definitely do need to make sure that you have it on you in a printed copy prior to you even getting on the plane. For this, you will also need to make sure that you have both entry and exit dates from Cambodia confirmed prior to you applying because they will be asking you that as part of your application and you may be refused entry if you do not have an onward journey planned. The good news is with the e-visa process is that the turnaround time is pretty quick. We ended up getting ours all sorted within the space of about 12 hours, which is pretty impressive by any country's standards. Once you do have it, as mentioned, you will need to print physical copies of the visa. They ask you to print out two to provide to the customs agent upon arrival. And the reason for this is because unfortunately, while there are barcodes that you can visibly see on the documents, they currently don't have the means of being able to scan from a mobile device. So until things change, that is just the way you're gonna to have to do it. Once you do provide all of that though, then the process is very swift and you'll be able to access this fascinating and beautiful country. Once you're in Cambodia, you're going to want to explore whatever city you're in. And one of the most popular ways to do this is by going on a tour. I did a lot of research prior to arriving in Cambodia and there are many tour operators and companies that allow you to book tours online. And I don't know why I hesitated to do this, but I did. And I decided to wait until we actually arrived to finalize any of our plans. And I'm really glad we did that in the end, because as it turns out in both Phnom Penh as well as Siem Reap, at each of the accommodations that we stayed at, they offered pretty much the exact same tours that I had found online, but at a much more affordable rate. So if you want to get the best value for your money, I highly recommend waiting until you get to your accommodation or contacting them beforehand to see what tours they provide and at what cost, because I have a feeling they will get you the best deal. When it comes to getting around, whether you are trying to get from the airport to your accommodation, whether you're trying to get a bus to move on to the next part of the country or even move on to a different country altogether, then the vast majority of this can all be arranged with your accommodation as well. And it is all very reasonably priced. In terms of what we ended up getting to do, then we actually managed to arrange bus travel 
between Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, as well as then going from Siem Reap onto our next country, all through bookings with our accommodation. So there is definitely something to be said for talking to locals and seeing what they can get in terms of the best price for you, because more often than not, they really will be the best value for money. Alternatively, if you would still prefer something more private, then Grab is still available and it is still pretty reasonably priced due to just how cheap Cambodia is. Cambodia primarily operates on cash and that even includes paying for your accommodation a lot of time, not just your food and tours, which are paid by cash in a lot of countries. The cash situation in Cambodia is interesting. Their currency is called reals, but it is a closed currency. That means that you cannot exchange it to another currency once you've left that country. So if you have any reals, we highly suggest that you spend the reals before you spend the US dollars. And the reason I bring up US dollars is because they also accept US dollars everywhere. And a lot of the prices that you'll see quoted are in US dollars, whether that be for food or for tours or accommodation. So sometimes you'll find that you pay in US dollars and they give you reals back in change. It just means that when you go to purchase something the next time, we recommend that you use your reals before you reach for your US dollars again, because you won't be able to change your reals back to any other valuable currency once you've left the country. Unfortunately, while we were in Cambodia, we weren't feeling especially well. So we didn't really venture to try any of the local Cambodian cuisine. And I do feel a little bit lesser for it because we had heard about some amazing dishes such as fish amok, which is a fish curry. San Lo Kor Kor, which is a local soup that pretty much all Cambodians swear by. Nam Ban Chok, which is also known as Khmer noodles, as well as Khmer red curry. All of these are signature dishes of the country, and we would have loved to have tried all of them, honestly speaking. Another thing that Cambodia and its neighbors are well known for is eating bugs. So do not be surprised as you go through the local markets if you see the likes of fried crickets or wood lice or scorpions or tarantulas all being something that you can try out at local market stalls. It is also worth noting that in the case of Cambodia, they even sometimes infuse bugs into what would be regular dishes. So there is such a thing as red ants with beef and other things like that. So therefore, if you're thinking of going for something a little bit crazy or eating something really out there as part of your world travels, if it's something on your bucket list, then definitely consider Cambodia as one of the places to go if you're really wanting to do that. If you've arranged onward bus travel through your accommodation, don't be surprised if the person who picks you up in a tricycle or rickshaw isn't actually the bus that you've arranged. Your accommodation or the bus company will often arrange for a separate driver to collect you and bring you to a central location from where the bus leaves. But don't worry about an additional cost. We were absolutely shocked to realize that the cost of transport from our accommodation to the bus station was included in the bus ticket that we purchased. Generally speaking, if you're gonna turn up to any of the major sites in Cambodia, then one of the things that you're probably going to end up doing is arranging a tour. And the best way to do that is obviously with your accommodation, as we've mentioned before. However, it is worth noting that any tour that you arrange will not include entry to the place that you're planning on visiting. So do expect to pay additional entry to any and all of the spots that you plan on going to along the way. It is also worth noting that if you do want an audio guide, then like with some other countries that we've been to, then that's not included in the price of your ticket and will be an additional fee. So for example, in Phnom Penh, we ended up going to the Twelfth Slang Genocide Museum, formerly S21, and the entry was five USD per person for the entry, and then an additional $5 per audio guide that you got with it. 
To get around that though, then it is worth noting that if you do have a pair of wired headphones, i.e. little earbuds, then you can save money a little bit on that by sharing one headset between the pair of you. Equally, the Killing Fields was $6 per person to enter, but then the audio guides were an additional $4 per person. For the Angkor Temple complex, which obviously includes Angkor Wat, then this is by far and away the most expensive thing that you can see in Cambodia, and with good reason, because let's face it, it's amazing. For a one day pass though, it is 37 US dollars per person. There are three day passes available, which do spread the cost out to be cheaper per day, per person. And that was actually an option that a number of people did want to get in case they wanted to spend more time exploring the same temples, or because there are hundreds to go and see, explore other temples in the complex. Generally speaking though, even with the additional costs, then we do thoroughly recommend taking the tours or using the audio guides, just so that you get that additional context to what you're seeing, because all of it, especially if you are planning on retracing our itinerary, is extremely important to learn about. Speaking of the Anchor Temple Complex, Keep in mind this is a place of worship, so you do need to be respectful and mindful. And in this case, it just means covering your shoulders as well as your knees. And that is our short list for Cambodia. We hope that these have been helpful for you and that if you are planning on retracing our itinerary, that you do take something from this. However, we do completely accept that this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm sure that you have more questions or you may even have additional recommendations to provide if you've been there yourself. With that, whether it's a question or an additional recommendation, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.